mine recently asked me what I love most about my bike and I came to the conclusion that it's an extension of myself, of my spirit and because I love looking at maps and exploring the, the bicycle became the perfect tool for it. This bike has helped me reach quite a few adventures across Europe and the latest adventure is uh, the time I cycled from the Netherlands to Moldova in only four weeks across 10 countries and over 3,000 kilometers. I left Amsterdam the day after finishing my master's degree. This is it, the start of uh, another adventure. First I'm taking the train to Venlo and then I'm gonna cycle the 50 kilometers between the train station and my friend's place, Pascal. <laughs> Hello. Hey. How's, How's it going? going? I'm really excited. Although it's raining, so we'll see how it goes. I had no idea at the time that I would be riding all the way to Moldova. I only knew that I wanted to go far, and that's exactly what I did. I, I came in just in time to watch the start of the Tour de France. It was really exciting to see all the pros in real life and to be this close to them. It's very crowded. And even here, no training, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Alter, schneller als die Bahn, Alter. And just like that, the Tour de France riders were gone, and it was now our turn to shine. We left Dusseldorf and then followed the Rhine. It took us some time to figure out how to pack all the bare bone necessary things. For all of us, the whole bikepacking system was new, so we needed to be selective, more so than ever. Not long after, we found ourselves in the beautiful city of Cologne. As usual, there is this dilemma about how much time to spend in each interesting place or city. I felt like I wanted to stay a bit longer, but we still had a lot of kilometers to cover that day, and the night was only getting closer. In the end, we finished the first day well into the night. The spirit of adventure was definitely there, Although, it felt almost reckless. I think it's safe to say that we definitely went too hard on the first day. Our average speed was really high. It's as if we forgot that we need to ride the next day too, and the day after too. And then the second day came and it was painful. Originally we wanted to cover a long distance each day, but that comes at a certain price, and the price being discomfort. Nonetheless, we persevered. We then got to meet the German corner, where the Rhine and Moselle rivers connect, with this massive statue at the edge. Switching to the Moselle river was a nice change. The landscape there is much more abrupt, so we have these massive overhanging vineyards. This is the steepest Supposedly, the steepest vineyard in the whole region. Oh my god. What a world. First climb. Yep. Someone wants to go home. <laughs> Look at that view. 450 meters climb. After two long days on flat roads, we started to tackle some climbs. Unfortunately, because of how steep and taxing they were, Pascal started to wonder if he'd be able to tackle the high alpine passes. 
My hands are shaking like crazy. For most of the trip, Google Maps showed us the way. I think it's this trail, but it's rocky and everything. The problem is that Google doesn't distinguish between terrain types. At least Google is good at one thing. Getting us lost and wandering in unknown locations. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't mind this, so... Yeah? No, I really don't mind it. <laughs> it's better than having straight, long, boring roads. Yeah, that's true. Because our setup is so light, we were able to hike the bike quite easily across the woods and uh, through, the, through the rocks. On the other side of the hill, we found what we were looking for, the Elts Castle. You see, depending on the places and roads that you're riding through, a bikepacking trip can contain as many or as few highlights. The Elts Castle was definitely a highlight, but there are a lot of moments in between these highlights where it's simply not as interesting. There is certainly a repetitive element to riding day in and day out. Each village then blends into the next one, and the road becomes infinite. Unless you can overcome this reality and enjoy cycling for what it is, then it becomes more and more unbearable. So on the fourth day, Philip decided to hang up his wheels and return to Dusseldorf. We said goodbye at the beautiful station of Trier, and Pascal and I continued together towards France. While we lost Philip, we gained an entire German team who kindly led us to the next town. Then Pascal and I headed towards the French region of Alsace through some rather impressive industrial zones. Uh, free, free, free. That place called, called in Ukraine. Um. Privet. 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 So we found our camping spot just over here. If you see the broken window. That big, big uh, cylinder-shaped thing. Yeah. I never fully realized just how good it is to be riding in France. It's one of those places where it's just simply easy to ride. It's easy to find beautiful roads and it's hard to get lost. Plus, most drivers are polite and give you a ton of space when overtaking. Unfortunately, we were vastly exposed to the open sun with that natural shade, so as the temperatures reached 40 degrees, we had to take some naps to regain composure. We finished the day in Strasbourg, where part of my family lives. And at the same time, my grandma was visiting too. I love it when I can see old friends or family when I'm on these long trips, especially because I don't see them very often throughout the year. My dad's cousin, Patrick, showed us the way out of Strasbourg towards the German border. Once across the Rhine River, we entered the Black Forest. To be fair, Neither of us expected to love the Black Forest as much as we did. The idyllic villages we passed through, the perfect landscapes that we saw, the fresh air we breathed, and the amount of shade and coolness that the pine trees provided. It is a perfect package for having a great time in the mountains.
As the night approached, it started to rain. Our plan was to ride as far as possible, including over the top of a mountain pass. The scariest moment was not riding down a mountain on wet roads and with poor visibility, but rather when going through the tunnels, because each time a car passed, the noise was amplified to a shocking degree. We finished for the day around 2 a.m. and slept inside a bank. Three hours later, at 5 a.m., we got up once again and continued our journey. We entered Switzerland, a country that is also very pleasant to ride in, with lots of gems like the Rhine Falls. Ultimately, we followed the Rhine once again, until the Constance Lake. Things became fun once again after leaving the lake as we were entering the Alps through Austria. We passed through the town of Bludenz where Milka chocolate is produced and of course everything around us smelled like chocolate. Then we tackled a series of climbs that were surprisingly easy. Since Pascal and I had been on the road for nearly two weeks, our legs got stronger and we became lighter. We also crossed paths with the Joelle and Serena, who were on their own trip from London to Bologna. The two of them are real adventurers, as shortly after we met, they traveled through Asia and South America for nearly a year. All four of us, we were about to cross an alpine pass when we were informed that due to a closure of a nearby road, all traffic was diverted. You can't really see much today. No. <laughs> so it was deemed too dangerous and illegal for cyclists to ride it. We had to take a small van to get to the top. We didn't complain though, since the climb would have taken us about an hour or two to climb it. But of course, we were more than happy to descend the mountain on the other side. At a crossroad, we had to split ways once again. The couple headed straight south to climb the Stelvio, while Pascal and I continued east. Ultimately, Pascal wished to remain within the lower passes of the Alps, and since I didn't feel like crossing them alone, we decided that we'd give the high passes another go on another future trip. For a few hours, we also entered Italy, and you could instantly tell how huge the Austrian influence is, in the architecture and the mix of German and Italian being used, and even in the way people acted. As we were edging closer to Lienz, we took time to reflect on our trip so far. I think we both learned that our bikes can get us far. 
especially when compromising on sleep. We also learned about being flexible when faced with change of plans. At the end of the day, traveling on two wheels is an exercise of character building, as you have to solve any issue that appears out of nowhere, and all of that while under the pressure of finding shelter before the night comes. When we reached Lyons, we met Pascal's family and got treated to a chill day at the spa. During that time, I regained most of my energy to continue the trip. Pascal, however, wanted to stay a few days more at the resort and then head home. So it was clear that I had to continue the journey on my own. And I was really excited for it, even though I wasn't 100% sure what my final destination would be.